What's up you guys? Welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys had an amazing Mother's Day week and weekend to all my moms out there. You guys are doing the thing. You're killing it. So proud of you, especially those of you that are going after your dreams and um, not letting anything stop you, okay? Uh, I wanted to talk to you guys today though about five common questions that I've seen come across my DMs and my emails and um, all of my other ways of communication uh, through phone calls and such that I've gotten asked about Caspa. Now, if you don't know about Caspa, it is our central application site where you would go to apply to PA schools that are participating in Caspa. Not all schools participate in Caspa, and so that's something that you'd have to just be mindful of. But for the most part, most schools do. And so you would want to know the answers to these questions. So let's get into it right now. Hey guys, what's up? It's Adana. Welcome back to my channel. So again, as I said before, I wanted to talk to you guys about five common questions that I've seen come across like my desk, okay, my virtual desk. Um, and also, like before we get into that, if you have not already checked out Ant's movie, you know, Ant, my husband, um, his movie, his newest movie that came out, uh, it is called Hope Lives. If you're looking for something really good to watch, apart from, you know, my, my channel, <laughs> You can go on over to Amazon Prime and type in Hope Lives uh, to see that movie. It's really good, you guys. And I know I may be a little biased, but I really think it's a good watch. But let's get into these questions, okay? The first question I get asked is, how long does it take to uh, fill out your application in CASPA? Now, obviously, this is not like a one-stop shop. This is not like a one-shoe-fits-all type of thing. Uh, this is literally, it depends on you as the person, uh, where you're at in your application. Like, are you still in school or are you not in school are you waiting in terms of waiting for transcripts to send to caspa or not have you already taken a year off and you've gotten all of your information in so it can vary right you know it can be anywhere from hey it took me two days 48 hours to add in all of this information or one day because i already applied through caspa and if you've applied through caspa like a year before most of that information transfers over there are only like a few short tidbits of information that you would have to enter in new um, such as like your newest transcripts and things of that nature and so with that being said uh, it may take a little bit more time but not significantly so if you are starting from scratch however then it may take even more time up to a week two weeks depending on how much you do in a day um, how like much you grind on that application so sorry guys there's not a like a one-time answer for this it varies okay the second question that I've gotten asked a lot a lot especially since 2020 was should I answer the optional COVID question now there is a question that is in CASPA about how COVID has affected you and obviously um, for some of you that may have applied through CASPA before you already answered that uh, and it doesn't have to change you don't have to change your answer per se based on what you've already said but if there are things that have changed or if there's something new that you're seeing uh, through the pandemic that is now affecting you and your life and applying a PA school and why you want to be a PA then add that in change your answer figure it out um, but I absolutely feel that you all should answer this question every one of us have been impacted by COVID it doesn't matter if uh, you haven't had any family members that have passed or if you haven't been impacted like significantly because again all of that is relative so because of that, I would absolutely say answer that question and make sure that you are purposeful in that because you should take every single opportunity that you can absolutely get to talk about yourself and show a little bit more of your personality and who you are and what you can bring to the table to these schools. And this answer and question section is just another way for you to do that. Okay, another common question that I've gotten on the same lines of like COVID and the pandemic is how do I enter in virtual shadowing? Now we do virtual shadowing at GTCU. So if you haven't checked this out, go to getthatstheuniversity.com where we help you not only get into, but through PA school, shameless plug. Um, but yes, we do virtual shadowing. And for us, if anybody wants to verify their virtual shadowing, we can give them a certificate. However, for certain virtual shadowing platforms, there may not be like, a, you know, like somebody that you can 
automatically get in contact with to say like yes they virtually shadowed or you know put that information in but where would you enter that in you would enter it in where you put your shadowing hours in uh, where you put your volunteer or other extracurricular activities I would say you would put it in there and you would just title it like virtual shadowing you would explain what it is you would explain what you learned what you saw um, and just be as detailed as possible because uh, a lot of PA programs and just people in general like they look at virtual things like oh my gosh like this is not this is not where it's at or like this is not like there's no way that they learned what a, what a PA does or anything about a PA based on this there's nothing like that but that is not the case and so be as detailed as you possibly can and put all of the the pertinent valuable information in that description box so that when the schools are looking at it they can see like yes you know this person has absolutely gotten the gist of um, what it is to be a PA in this particular specialty so another question that I've gotten asked is can you see your letters of recommendation uh, after you've sent it through CASPA or can you retrieve it especially for those that may be applying to not only like CASPA participate programs but non caspa participating programs and the answer is no so no you cannot see it um, and should you even request to see it and that answer is also no I don't think that you should request to see it I think you should absolutely always waive your rights to see your letter of recommendation I think it is a little tacky and it can come off tacky if you ask for that um, and I don't know if schools are able to see like oh yes you know this person asked for to be able to see their letter of recommendation. But I mean, to not even put yourself in that position and not even like have that be an option, just waive your rights to that letter of recommendation and call it a day, okay? And the last question that I typically get asked is usually about the transcript because the transcripts section of CASPA can be a little bit kind of convoluted or complicated. Uh, it's how you're going to get calculated your science GPA, your CASPA calculated GPA, which can make or break you and your chances of getting into PA school. And so uh, when it comes to requesting your transcripts, I've gotten asked like, hey, I'm currently taking a class. Do I still request the transcripts? Now, the answer is yes, okay, because there are, and especially if this is like a prerequisite class that you need for the school. Because what you can do is you can say that it's in process, but you need to have the transcript to show that you're actually taking the class. So do that, you know, it's not gonna necessarily be calculated into your CASPA calculated transcript uh, because you don't have a grade for it, but having it there so that the people that are actually like looking at your application, the application coordinators at the various different school, they can see like, yes, you know, although they may not have the particular prerequisite on um, all of these other transcripts, they are taking it and it is in progress. And for some schools that do allow various different prerequisites and coordinators, Courses to be like kind of outstanding at the time of application this is actually really good for you okay so hopefully this answered all of you guys is like burning questions about cast but if you have any other questions for me you already know what to do leave them in the comment section below um, thank you guys so much for watching if you haven't already done so go ahead and like this video and subscribe um, drop me any other comments in the comment section on what you might want to see next I'm gonna be doing another this or that um, this this or that is is going to be about occupational therapists and physical therapists you know understanding the differences between those and seeing which route you want to take so if you're interested in that for sure be um, on the lookout for that video and be on the lookout and let me know about any other this or that videos that you might want me to do in terms of a different specialty or career path that you might be considering because there's so many various different career paths in healthcare. So it's not just like PA and P and MD, okay? Like there's much more on the horizon. So spread your wings, my little butterflies. <laughs> Anyways, thank you guys so much for watching. I will talk to you guys next time.